Welcome to worship. This Sunday, the church worldwide celebrates Pentecost. When we remember that, as he promised, Jesus did not leave his followers alone in the world, but sent to them the Holy Spirit. We will hear read to us the story of the coming of that Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, and also the story from the Gospel of John, of the disciples receiving the Holy Spirit in a slightly less dramatic way. Come Holy Spirit, the wind of God, the breath of life. Come Holy Spirit, our advocate, our counsellor. Come Holy Spirit, teacher of wisdom, reminder of Christ. Come Holy Spirit, grantor of forgiveness, giver of peace. Come Holy Spirit. Oh, what would they do? A sound like the rush of a violent wind filled the whole house with all of them there. These tongues or this ruach, this fire appeared like an answer to all of their prayers. Oh, what would they do with their Lord up and gone, out of sight, vanished, gone, disappeared? Thus, fire from heaven, like Sinai, encore, all their doubts of the kingdom then cleared. The news of salvation is not some obscure or exclusive thing meant for a few. All manner of folk, of all nations on earth, now are given the love that makes new. A reading from Psalm 104. May the glory of the Lord be for ever. May the Lord enjoy what he has made. We will sing to the Lord all our lives. We will sing praises to God as long as we live. May our thoughts please God. May we be happy in the Lord. With our whole being, let us praise the Lord. Let us pray. Mighty and gracious God, it was gladness that we gather now in your presence, bringing to you our worship. We adore you, creator and sustainer of all things, giver of every good and perfect gift. For your goodness and mercy have followed us all our days. God of overflowing generosity, we praise you for the gift of your love and the coming of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Today we remember with joy the coming of the Spirit at Pentecost upon all those gathered, dispelling their fears, clearing their vision, uniting them as one, equipping them for mission. Among us today, among your people wherever they are, may the same Spirit of Pentecost give us grace in these ways too. May our hearts and lives be open to the wind of the Spirit, the giver of life, so that we may live more faithfully as members of your realm and as joyful witnesses to the good news of Jesus Christ. And yet, gracious God, we remember that when the Spirit came down at Pentecost, not all were glad. Forgive us when, in fear and folly, we close our minds and hearts to your Spirit at work. Forgive us when we refuse to acknowledge the Spirit's action in others and in situations out with our own comfort zones. Forgive us when we quench the Spirit, choosing darkness over light, and hinder the growth of the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. Forgive us when we block the Spirit's constant promptings to share the good news of Jesus with others by word and loving action. Forgive us when we choose safe and comfortable paths in place of the sometimes risky routes to which the Spirit directs us. Cleanse our hearts by your Spirit, O God, so that we may be your dwelling place. Fill us anew that we may be bold and humble witnesses to a world in need of the love of Jesus, in whose name we further pray, saying, Our Father, who is in heaven, holy be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial, and deliver us from evil, for yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and for ever. Amen. Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 14. The coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a noise like a strong blowing wind came from heaven. 
and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw something like flames of fire that were separated and stood over each person there. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak different languages by the power the Holy Spirit was giving them. There were some religious Jews staying in Jerusalem who were from every country in the world. When they heard this noise, a crowd came together. They were all surprised because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were completely amazed at this. They said, look, aren't all these people that we hear speaking from Galilee? Then how is it possible that we each hear them in our own languages? We are from different places. Parthia, Media, Elam, Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, the areas of Libya near Cyrene, Rome, both Jews and those who become Jews, Crete and Arabia. But we hear them telling in their own languages about the great things God has done. They were all amazed and confused, asking each other, what does this mean? But others were making fun of them, saying, oh, they have had too much wine. But Peter stood up with the eleven apostles, and in a loud voice he spoke to the crowd, my fellow Jews and all of you who are in Jerusalem, listen to me, pay attention to what I have to say. Gospel according to John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 23, Jesus appears to his followers. When it was evening on the first day of the week, the followers were together. The doors were locked because they were afraid of the Jews. Then Jesus came and stood right in the middle of them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The followers were thrilled when they saw the Lord. Then Jesus said again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, I now send you. After he said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they are not forgiven. In medieval times in Europe, folk really enjoyed seasonal festivals, events that gave their lives a timeline, made some days different, gave something to look forward to or remember fondly. In our 21st century time of plague, I found myself marking out my life more seasonally too, and that has stuck with me as we've moved back into more normal times. I'm not quite planting my garden by the cycles of the moon yet, but I do like to celebrate church festivals, such as today's Pentecost, and also our Scottish festivals like Imbolc, Beltane and Midsummer. The Jews of first century Palestine loved their festivals, and we are tied into their festive year by events in Jesus' life. Jesus was in Jerusalem to celebrate the festival of Passover when he was killed. And then 50 days after that, his followers were back in Jerusalem to celebrate Shavuot, the early harvest festival, a festival the Greek-speaking Jews called Pentecost. The readings we heard today give us two versions of how the disciples received the Holy Spirit. The tradition originating with the writer of the Gospel of John, which suggests that receiving the Spirit is a thing of peace and reconciliation. And the tradition originating with the writer of the Acts of the Apostles, where receiving the Spirit is magnificent, dramatic and noisy. Noise like strong wind, flames of fire, loud chatter and a fearlessness in speaking out. It must have been an amazing experience for anyone involved in any way. Everyone, no matter where in the world they came from, hearing about the great things God has done. Happy, excitable days. We all have these. But sometimes we need quiet, reassuring days. 
the days when God's voice is comforting and small in the silence of our lives. The days when the Holy Spirit's gentle breath of peace is so very welcome. There's a song by John Bell and Graham Mall written about the Holy Spirit. It's called Enemy of Apathy. They use the she, her pronouns of the Hebrew word for spirit, ruach, to paint a picture of a being involved in humanity's world since the very beginning, working with the word, enabling, inspiring, nourishing God's people, dancing with the early disciples. The final verse of the song says, For she is the spirit, one with God in essence, gifted by the Saviour in eternal love. She is the key opening the scriptures, enemy of apathy and heavenly dove. The Holy Spirit is always encouraging God's people to act, to tell, to pray, to believe that through them God will make a difference, that their one candle can light up a whole room. The Holy Spirit is the enemy of apathy, the enemy of us feeling powerless, the enemy of all that would tell us we are insignificant, unimportant, that what we do doesn't matter. Andrew King, a Canadian priest poet, speaks of the spirit being like the wind we experience on a stormy day, wondering if that wind is ever blowing, the same wind moving round the world in its blowy way, and then realising that the Holy Spirit is like that wind, forever blowing its way round the world, forever enlivening our lives. Suddenly there came a sound. It was one of those days where leaves thrashed from trees, branches, thing under a racing sky, and my childhood friend playing outdoors with me wondered, does the wind ever stop blowing? And does it stop somewhere, he asked again, or just keep going round and around the world? Back then I said I didn't know, but now I know. There came a day when a wind began in a certain house that filled with a light like flame and that wind had the roar of justice and that wind had the rush of love and that wind had the whisper of peace and compassion and it carried the words of hope and joy to the anxious and needy world. And it was a gentle enough to touch the wounded soul and strong enough to stir the ever-seeking hearts of men and men, young and old, from city to distant shores. And it pulled down walls of distrust and fear and threw open doors of possibility and oaks of hatred have bent in its path and palisades of pain have fallen to its strength. A new life has spread like scattered seed and yes, my friend, that wind circles the world, and no, it has never stopped blowing.
as the body of Christ, in the power of the Spirit, let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, restless breath of love, breathe on us now and help us to pray as we ought. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, to your world today. As you brought order out of chaos at the beginning, brood over the chaos we have created in today's world, so that people everywhere may learn the way of life you intend and find purpose, meaning and hope in their existence. Where there is oppression and abuse of others, may we help to bring your justice. Where there is anxiety and fear, may we help to bring your peace where there is hatred and division, may we help you to bring your love. Where the resources of this world are exploited and we fail in our calling as trustees of land and sea, grant us repentance and the grace to learn a better way. Guide the rulers of the world in ways of justice and integrity, of truth and peace. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, to your church today. Breathe into us new life and zeal and delight in the gospel. We ask that you set our hearts on fire with your love and that you grow your own fruit in our lives. As you did that day in Jerusalem, in all our diversity makes us one in truth and love. Let the gifts of all be valued and used for the common good empower and equip us to be a compelling witness to Jesus's amazing love for all by the way we live and speak and serve that many will come to know him for themselves make us unafraid to stand out from the crowd and may it be seen that we are living our lives with Jesus come Holy Spirit come come Holy Spirit to all who need your presence today. Spirit of comfort, be near to all who are sad and lonely. Spirit of power, give your strength to those who carry heavy burdens or are weary on life's journey. Spirit of peace, speak calm to troubled hearts and minds. Spirit of life and light, lift from despair those for whom daily life has lost interest, meaning and hope. Shine the Christ light into their darkness. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, and do a new work through the church in this land and in all the world. Revive us and equip us for those tasks to which your people in every age and place are called. Help your church to move forward with new life, new hope, new vision. May we Christians act ever more closely together, joined in our rich diversity as the one body of Christ. So may glory be given to you, parent, son and Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Once again, it's been a privilege to share worship with you. This week, may God be made known to us through the life-giving love of Jesus Christ. And may our Pentecost lives bring all those we meet to experience the security of God's everlasting love. Jesus said to his friends, Peace be with you. As the Father sends me, so I send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. And so may the peace of the Lord be always with us. And may the Almighty God, who on the day of Pentecost sent the Holy Spirit to Jesus' disciples with the wind from heaven and in tongues of flame, filling them with joy and boldness to preach this gospel, may that same God fill us with the power of the same Spirit to witness to God's truth and to draw all folk to God's love. And may the blessing of God, Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer, be with us this day of Pentecost this week and forevermore.